Hello. Yeah, so we're doing a uh, okay. So we're doing a live today uh, for mental health uh, action day around um, men and machismo. Uh, we don't talk about men, and we're gonna have Diego Lozano and uh, Nico Hernandez join us, and I'm trying to invite them. So bear in mind with me, and we hope to have them here. But yeah, so if it's going to be a, a, a good conversation. Um, Diego and I were talking about a little beforehand that it's going to be a, a challenging conversation just because overall it's a very uh, difficult topic for us. Um, and we'll talk about why. So how are you, Diego? What did you have for lunch? Uh, for lunch, well, I'm doing good. Um, man, I forgot what I had for lunch. I, oh, I did, I did bad today. I just had a protein shake. It's not pretty good, bad. People. I know. Not good at all. What about you? Um, I had a gordita, a gordita from Taco Saguaro. I was going to get tacos. Oh, no. Don't tell me that. That's my favorite place. Yeah, I was going to get tacos. Tacos, they have the best Al Pastor tacos. Yeah, they do. In East Phoenix. All right. And Nico was unable to join, so we're going to give him a little more time to join. Uh, but, yeah, they have one. Los tacos tan riquísimos, specifically the los del Pastor are the best. Hey, Nico. Hey. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Oh, let's go, Nico. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we're good. No, how are you? We're asking, like, how are we doing? And then uh, just a little bit, what did you eat for lunch? Um, I'm good. I just had sopita today, you know, something slight. What did you guys eat? <laughs> um, I ate uh, una gordita um, de carne asada from Tacos al uh, Sobaro. Oh, yummy. And then I, I just had coffee. <laughs> Coffee is good, right? Iced coffee? No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> I mean, no, I was telling him I did pretty bad today. I only had a protein shake. It, it's, I'm bad. It's bad. I know I need to eat, but it's been, it was a long day. But yes, <laughs> yeah. So okay, we'll we'll get started. We're here now. Uh, first of all, we're we're not therapists. We're not professionals. Uh, we're just having a conversation about mental health um, and our experiences uh, as men uh, and. Hopefully you find this helpful. Hopefully um, you also engage, ask questions, and provide feedback. Um, and I would, like I was saying at the beginning, uh, it's gonna be a, a little bit, uh, at least personally, it's a little bit challenging conversation because often we don't have these conversations. I don't have these conversations with a lot of people. Um, so we'll see, uh, but a little quick introduction so we could say our name, um, how they, your involvement with Aliento, uh, and then your favorite uh, food and hobby. So I'll go first. Uh, Nemo Zapatino, I am the Vice President of Education and um, External Affairs Aliento. So I work with a lot of students and partners. Favorite food, uh, tacos. Uh, I just love all tacos. And my favorite hobby is uh, going on walks with my dogs. Diego, could you go? Okay. Um, so I'm Diego. I'm the a digital and marketing director with Aliento. So I handle all the social medias, uh, websites, and emails. So, um, and handle all the digital strategies. So my favorite food is mole, um, specifically the, like the, the sweet, spicy one that you get in South Mexico. My mom is from Morelos, so they make some bonus mole there. And hobbies, I like to work out. You'll see me with my kettlebells. I love Star Wars, photography, and graphic design, and video games. Um, that's to Nico. All right. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Nicholas Hernandez. I go by Nico, though. Um, and I'm a current fellow for Aliento for the 21 to 22 cohort. And I'm also a rising junior at ASU. My favorite food is enchiladas, the pollo, um, green salsa. And, um, my favorite hobby is listening to music. I need music for everything, like, to focus, to work. I just love listening to music. Yeah. So also I'm a little nervous, but we forgot to say pronouns. So pronouns is he, him, his, el, uh, Diego. Same. Same he, him. Same he, <laughs> him. <laughs> All right. So the first question, um, so we'll get right started into it. 
uh, what are some stigmas you faced around mental health as a man? Um, so, for example, I think there is the famous saying that like, uh, los hombres uh, no lloran, so men don't cry. But if uh, Nico, can you get us started? What are stigmas that you heard um, you faced as mental health and, and as a man? Yeah, definitely. I feel like growing up, you always hear like men don't cry. And like being a little boy, you like right away, you're taught men don't cry. Or if you do cry, you're seen as weak. Um, and if you're sad, it's just like go play or like pray or something. So it's just like kind of shutting down. Like you hear stigmas like mental health is not real. Or if you are crying, like you're seen as weak. So those are like the most of the stigmas I grew up with. Um, yeah. Diego. Um, yeah, no, I, I guess I, I've always kind of been like the, the sense, the sensitive dude, just growing, just growing up, like I, I would cry, I would, I would, I would whine, I will like, I'll get hurt by almost everything just as easily. And because of that, I, I've, I've been told that, you know, like, oh, you shouldn't be, you're like a guy, you shouldn't be crying, you shouldn't be crying in front of others. Uh, and and yeah, it kind of just made me like kind of like, and later in life, just be a little bit more more reserved. Um, but there's definitely like, you know that that stigma around like even talking about it, like amongst especially the older generation. But and but I feel like lately it's been it's been it's been a little bit easier, especially with the rise of social media. But yeah, I I will leave it at that for now. Yeah, no, no. Similarly, I there's a story of me. Um, so when I was a little kid, I was a big fan of Pokemon, uh, and I used to watch it all the time. And I thought I was ass catch jump, and I was gonna catch uh, Charmander. So there's uh, towards the end of the first season, um, Ash loses um, in the tournament, and I couldn't believe that he lost. Right, that was like my, and I couldn't believe that he lost. And as a little kid, I started crying. Oh um, yeah, to Richie. To Richie, right. Uh, yes, yeah, it's Richie. Richie, Richie's Pikachu, and then um, my my family still at this point still brings it up. Like, oh, I remember that time you were a little kid and you cried, and like I I I there I think they love me, but it, to me like it was always like even at that moment in time I could not um, I showed emotion and I showed weakness, um, so therefore it was there was to that point. Um, and then recently, because I've gone to a lot of graduations of high schools and colleges, and I'm like, I just see the parents so happy, and I, and I get the, the the speeches, and I'm like, part of me wants to let some of the emotions, but I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, you can't, no puedes, like, you, you can't. Um, so after that, actually, Jesus Magaña uh, made a comment right here, and he said, along with a question, what has helped you get past uh, to that point where you felt more comfortable access, assessing your emotions. So what has helped you access your, your emotions? Um, if, if you want, you can go, but if not, I, I can go. Okay, this is Nico, Diego. I, I, I can go. I, I feel like, um, uh, I don't know. I think with the, like, I, I, we were like preparing earlier and we were about to like have the live without even going live, so. <laughs> We were just talking about how, like, lately it's been, um, there's been a, like, more visibility around mental health issues than we now know more terms, more uh, more ways of, like, expressing ourselves. And then social media kind of, like, really connects, connected us in a, in a way where, um, where, you know, like, you, you see a lot of folks that, that reinforce that, like, it's okay to cry, it's okay to do this, say your emotions, and it's okay to, you know, uh, to express yourselves and and all that. So I, for me, it definitely is like you know, like social media, um, uh, creating that space. Um, I I don't know how to say this, but like um, I don't know. I, I I'm like I'm like a tall guy. I, I'm a big. If you see me, I'm like a big guy. You see me, I'm six, six one. one. I, Six one. I have a deep voice. At least I think so. And <laughs> and I and this might go into like you know. Um, I, I feel like I I could I could do that, and uh, it might be just my like tall privilege or male privilege, but I, I feel like I could I could do that. Um, I'm in a space where I can ex I, I'm in spaces where I can express myself, and 
and I, and I carry myself that way. Mm. Nico, do you um, go? Yeah, I definitely agree with Diego. Now, like with increased awareness on social media, definitely like shows you more people you can relate to about being open with your feelings, like when you're not feeling good, and also like um, just allowing yourself to feel and like seeing how you feel better after has definitely made me more in touch with my emotions being comfortable because like when you do bottle it up there's like more effects and like I don't feel as good but now that I actually let things out and allow myself to feel and be open about it I just feel more comfortable being in touch with it and just like more people talking about it makes me feel okay about it and being able to relate to more people definitely helps. Bueno as the eldest here uh, in the group um I've always been in touch with my emotions, specifically rage and anger, which is not healthy. Um, so for me, it's growing up was always that it's okay to, to express anger. Um, and most of it has been verbal or, or nonverbal, which typically is fighting. Um, so as, a, as a little kid, it was like I was told um, that you resolve your problems con, con las manos, a golpes. Um, and it wasn't until I got a little bit older and have gone, I, I, I go to uh, have uh, bi-weekly therapy sessions where I was able to to have, it's been since 2018 and mostly in 2019, I, I really started to see that I started to process and unpack the stuff that has gone in my life uh, that has helped me to where I'm at and to a point where I can access um, more empathy, more vulnerability uh, and be okay with who I am. But yeah, so it's one of uh, one of the things that just growing up that I just remember that it was uh, that we were. I remember a friend of mine. We were we were we were upset with each other, and then my uh, I called him uncle. He wasn't my uncle because but he was like, well, if you really want to deal with this, you have to fight. And like, if you don't fight, then like you just have to let it go. And I just remember doing that all the time uh, as a little kid. And then I think so. I got older. I still kept some of those still tendencies, which were not healthy, uh, have not served me well. Uh, I, but, mm -hmm. Yes, you. Can add to that? No, I, I do think you're right. Like, I, I also, I feel like it might be engraved in us, but I do have, like, that inner rage. Sometimes it just comes out of nowhere, and I'm like, it, like, if someone says something wrong to me, it's just like I immediately shut down. I either get angry or shut down. Um, and... And it doesn't feel good, like, afterwards. It, like, so that's one thing I, I'm, like, craving to avoid. Just, just come to, like, not guilt at all. I just come to my sense, I'm like, that, that is not healthy for me. And what, what good is it going to do for any, every, anyone else? Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like there is that, like, thing that's, I don't know, that just comes out of nowhere. And I, I, I've worked towards it. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like this. Um, perdón, Nico. It's like you have... Um, like this little thing that comes out of nowhere. It's like, ah, you thought you had left me? No, vente pa' acá, come over here. No, I agree with both of you guys related. But I don't know, like you said, like we're taught like that. And it's like, when I get upset, I don't communicate right away. I just shut off. And like, even when I'm with my parents, it's like, my mom's like, what's wrong? Like, why are you upset? And it's hard for me to communicate. But I think we're all learning now that, because we're so used to being shut down and like not we're taught like don't express your emotions if you're upset so we're just used to that now and like being grown we're recognizing it but i definitely recognize that in my own behavior too yeah okay here goes right and, and this is we're gonna be as born of us we can um so diego how have you reinforced machismo slash toxic masculinity and if so how Oh man. If you can share a couple of examples if you want to be that. If not, I can go first. Can you go first, please? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I have a lot of toxic masculinity within me, a lot of machismo in life. It's been ingrained since I was a little kid. I grew up in, a, I'm from a town about 100 people from Guanajuato, a small, small village where it was very religious. And um, Guanajuato, if you didn't know, Mexico is the most conservative state. Uh, so growing up, I had a lot of ones. One of the examples, I'm wearing like a shirt that has pink because up until I think it was my sophomore year of high school, I thought that only people who were for men who were gay were pink. And like, and like that was a stigma that existed. And like, I was like, 
that's really bad. But uh, an example for me that I reinforce toxic masculinity is that, as Diego mentioned, I'm a, I'm a bigger guy. And oftentimes I get excited um, or I'm going to speak and I raise my voice. And for me, that's normal. But I don't understand how that impact that it has with that with the person next to me, specifically in you working with, with, with women or other individuals. Um, so I do that way too often. Um, and it's something that was pointed out by a coworker is like, I understand where you're coming from, but Jose, I understand that you coming close to me and the tone that you're using and, and that you're excited and we're having a discussion, that is scary to me because of the stuff that I had in the past. So it's like whole, this whole notion of men using their, their, their bigger physical stature or their presence to intimidate. And, and then going back, to, we were actually talking about this, Diego, um, and the, uh, uh, before the live is that as a little kid, you're bullied. And I just like, I'm remembering like a little kid when you're bullied by bigger kids and like they beat you up. And I'm like, how I felt, I don't want other people to feel like that. And, and like, and so for me, like trying to constantly not do that anymore because it's like, it's, it's not my intention, but that's the outcome that it has. <laughs> um yeah i think for i think for me it, it's i i try my best not to to reinforce it but i know like it, it, it you know i'm not perfect so it, it does happen sometimes sometimes i uh like um i guess for me sometimes like when i when i was a lot younger i i would like you know, does not value a, a, a woman's op, a opinion as much. It, this was like back in like high school, but even still, I, I remember it. And then like, I, I will remember it. And I'm like, oh no, she, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Uh, it's not that serious, uh, whatever. And then, or, um, and you know, like all that I remember. And I was like, oh, it, like I cringe so much just thinking about all those times when I was like, even in, in high school or in middle school and things I've said about women and all that. Uh -huh. And yeah, I, I just make sure I strive to not like to be aware of that and to, you know, like not take space now and to, uh, and to, uh, yeah, become a, be a better person. But no, I definitely, when I was a lot younger, there was those instances. Um, now, I guess for like, now I'm older, the, the things that I guess it, reinforces it is you know like you know witnessing it and not calling it out mm -hmm. um like I, I you know obviously i still witness it in, like in spaces amongst friends amongst new groups that i'm with and i'm like and i if i see it like i feel like by not calling it out i'm reinforcing it but because then I go talk about it with like friends and all that, like, I can't believe this person said this and that. But then at the end of the day, I didn't do anything about it. Uh, so in a way, that's kind of how I reinforce it. And it's it's still hard for me to like call it out, too, because. Yeah, even there is that stigma, like about looking weaker about or about not knowing what to say, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what happens sometimes is that you lose those friendships because people don't appreciate you you holding them accountable. Um, but that's good. Uh, Nico, you're yeah. trying to hot <laughs> um, I feel like I definitely reinforce it a lot within myself in terms of crying. I never allow myself to cry in front of people. I have, like, I thought, like, I view crying as weak, like you're weak, like you're not allowed to share emotions. And that was probably mostly during high school. Like I would never cry, never, my friends never see me cry. Probably until like <laughs> my first year of college, I let my best friend see me cry because that was like an accident. But I always would judge, which sadly, but I don't do that no more because I've learned. But I would always reinforce like, oh, uh, why is he crying? Or like, if I wouldn't let myself cry, I'm just like, my mama didn't raise me to be weak. And now I'm just like, no, it's okay to feel emotions or in public. Like people, I want people to be more open and when they're feeling upset, um, but I would never let myself cry. And I would always reinforce that within myself, um, toxic masculinity. But now I try to do my best to allow myself to feel things, be natural, um, be open about it too. I still don't like to cry in front of people, but if I got to, I will. But I, yeah, <laughs> that's how I reinforce it. 
No, no, it's, and it's a constant struggle and a constant journey. Um, I thought you were talking about like certain women, like I, I, when I was younger and then my, my elementary to, to high school thing for me was like, a woman cannot beat me in math. There was no way, like, I just thought like, I, I'm supposed to be better. Uh, and then in college, I got, I got, I got over that. And I was like, okay, it's like, it's not about that. It's who actually is able to, and like in the capacity, uh, but then initially, when I got involved in community organizing, um, a lot of the a lot of the leaders here are women or part of the LGBTQ community, and rightfully so, they do a lot of the work, uh, and they're the ones in the forefront, and they're more courageous. But initially, for me, it was so hard to me to follow what they were saying and they were leading, because I was like I was so used to just having this male figure to be the leader, whether it was in sports because I played sports, it was always like the male, whether it was in in high school, because while the teachers were mostly female, you still had the principal was male. And it was just really difficult for me to see that. And it took a while to change that. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit sad that that was like the case. But for me, it's like, it's also humble to understand that it's a journey that we constantly have to fight. And as Diego mentioned, it's not something that, that is, it's not a destination. You have to keep doing it on a daily, daily basis. Um, and this is goes related to this one. How have you worked to deconstruct machismo and other men? Diego, you're up. Mm -hmm. Me, I, I, like I said, it, it's it's still it's still very hard. It's still a little hard for me to like you know like stand up against someone that's maybe I, I I'm witnessing it. Me myself, you know, I I try to like you know make sure that I'm not I'm not taking too much space. I um. You know, let people finish what they're uh, say, saying. Don't I don't like try to interrupt. I don't try to, uh, you know, use my my tallness to like barge in and you know pick up all the space. And amongst friends, I I do try to I try to call it at least amongst my close group of friends that even which comprise of both men and women, obviously. And you know, if we could, I could, it could be reinforced by both ends. And uh, and just calling it out, at least amongst your immediate network. I know it's hard, to, maybe in a new space where you know you're with your coworkers or at maybe like the gym or the store. Or I don't know, but starting with your close group of friends. <laughs> Nico, um, yeah, definitely. Like Bill said, um, for me, I kind of like to you know with men specifically, like calling it out, it's just uh, uh, explain to them, like, it's okay to cry, share your emotions, like, you're not seen as weak, like, you're supposed to cry, don't bottle things up, definitely with, like, my closer friend, guy friends, um, and then just in general, like, trying to change the stereotype of, like, a man, like, he doesn't have to be the strong, like, leader, and just definitely calling out older generations, because, like, I'll sometimes call my parents, or just other people, like, men can wear makeup, we can wear pink, like, all those different things. <laughs> Um, just, you know, calling people out and saying the truth. So, yeah. All right. The next question is, what do you do when you're feeling down? Um, I'll go a little bit, uh, go a little bit first. So, um, for me, there's different emotions. Like, when I have stress, I'm like, devil, and I don't eat. I just don't feel like eating. Uh, when I'm sad, I eat a lot of bread or a lot of potato chips, con chile limon. Uh, and when, when I'm, I'm anxiety, I need to go out and like do physical activity because I started shaking. Um, how about you, Diego? How about you, Nico? Um, do you want to go, Nico? Um, yeah. So just like when we're upset, uh, when you're feeling down. Okay. Um, I love to listen to sad songs because I feel like that's how I could <laughs> feel my emotions more. I like to be dramatic. <laughs> I like to put my headphones in, you know, maybe cry a little bit. I'm just kidding. But I like to listen to sad songs and just feel things more because after that does help me feel better. Or I always call my friends and just love to rant because that helps me best feel better. Cool. Um, for me, uh, you know, like uh, working out and not like the I mean, I work out hard, but but even then, like, I try to find the calm, calmness in that. Like, even if my heart is my heart is racing from that, I find I find ways to to like really like ease into it and brace the book. Um, but you know, just being in nature, um, calming myself down. I like music too. Um, 
So orchestra music really like gets me into good into good uh good mood. Video game music. I love to Nintendo music as well. Nintendo Final Fantasy. Oh man, I can I can go all all in. But um yeah, just doing things that helps me calm down or or like working out video games and uh, being in nature. That's good. Um the other thing is uh it's what are you where have you seen um or how have you seen men uh in your life be able to be vulnerable? Um and I'll go first to give an example of what I'm talking about. We were talking about this on the on the on the pre that when I seen in mass media, but also in live person when I seen men be vulnerable is when they're drunk or intoxicated mm -hmm. or doing something. Um I just kept thinking about it, it's like because I used to watch, I still watch, but I used to watch a lot of movies, the Mexican movies, and it's like Pedro Infante or Linda Fernandez or Antonio Aguilar. Anytime they're actually emotional, like they're vulnerable or they're crying, is when they're drunk. And it's like, that's the only way when it's normalized. And then in growing up, I had a lot of older friends and that's where I would see them actually like talk about their experiences as a kid and like how their parents treated them and like the stuff that was really off on their life and and then that was normalized, getting older and then talking with, with more folks. It's like, that's not a very healthy way because then you associate um, a kind of like expression or feeling understood or being vulnerable with uh, alcohol or addiction in, in this type. And then you're not really treating the wound. You're just actually hurting yourself more and re-traumatizing. But that's just an example for me. I don't know if you have a similar one um, or if you have a different one. No, I mean, I mean, growing up or just just uh, in general, like the only times I do see see men uh, and their coping mechanisms are just like anger and and frustration, and you know, it's like you remember those those things when you're little, like, um, and yeah, they're they're very unhealthy. Um, so, like. That's why I, I'm trying to strive to, you know, like express myself in in better ways. Um, so it's not like not so it's not like when I'm older. That's the only time when I'm <laughs> older folks with sad music playing. That's when I will express it. Now it's it's going to be throughout my entire life. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree with Jose. I feel like it is very unhealthy, but um, men are vulnerable with alcohol only. I've seen like limited times growing up like when men are vulnerable i feel like it has to be a private space but i can't think of too many examples but now i feel like we're trying to reinforce that it's okay to be vulnerable so hopefully things will change yeah hopefully no um, i can go on and on about these type of stories but uh also there's there's people that you know and i and i go back and i think about it that was not a very healthy way for us to cope and and for us to actually start the healing process because you don't um and I think about the maybe because uh, the movies and the media that I was into, but I was like, you were only allowed to cry when your love that you had, which because you like left you or something, and you weren't allowed to cry when like your a loved one died or passed away. Um, and it was always like drinking. So for me, it was like that's like later on growing up. That's when I understood that. But we're running out of time. So the last one is, um, what are some steps that you're taking to tackle machismo uh, in your life? Nico, what are some steps that you're doing to tackle machismo? Um, like, I would say cancel stereotypes, um, not put people in a box, call out judgments, uh, call out what's wrong, like when people judge people, try to put them in a box, yeah, just all that stuff. Cool. Um, <laughs> for me, um, I just, just be respectful, like, like I know we're in a world where we're in a we're in a place where you know people will have like different pronouns, different uh, ways of identity, and all that. And honestly, the only thing they're asking for everyone to do is just you know, just you go uh, go about what they what they want you to call them, and and that and that's it. Just be respectful and respect their decision. It doesn't mean you have to change who you are. Um, and that's that's a big step another step obviously calling it out being comfortable with calling it out hold your friends accountable um and 
And the other one, just, I, I just thought about this because, and it's another way I kind of reinforce it, is the type of, like, content you're taking in. Mm. Like, mm. like, you know, like, I'm, you can all talk about, like, all the music. I, I listen to a lot of good music that makes me feel good, and then I'm, like, listening to Kanye West and, you know, all the, the content and the things that go behind it. So check yourself, too. Continue checking yourself. We're not all perfect, but but definitely check the content that you're taking in. Yeah, no, and as you mentioned, and similarly, it's, it's working on yourself, learning more, understanding and evolving with, with, with the world. Like, several years ago, pronouns were not something that was used. Like, I was talk talking uh, to the group as, like, it wasn't until a few years ago that I, I heard the term toxic masculinity. I always heard machismo since I was a little kid, porque siempre las tías decían, este hombre mexicano que se cree, este, 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 el otro. And there's also, it's like, as you mentioned, Diego, there's a lot of people who we could have influence on certain culture if we stop uh, purchasing them and, and buying their products. Um, certain people that stand for certain things that are, are now our values and what we don't want to be at. But I think that we, we, are, we are at time and we're going to close the Olympic way by what are we taking, what are we leaving for the space? Uh, Diego, could you, uh, could you lead us? Yes, I'm... I'm uh, leaving behind uh, the dress. It was it's my first time doing a live and taking a back a lot of insight and all the comments left. Check yourself. <laughs> Pass it to Nico. Um, I'm definitely leaving the nervousness because I was scared to be on this. And I'm taking an open heart and open mind because this was a very good discussion. And Pass it to you, Jose. Uh, similarly, I never haven't been this nervous uh, in a while. Um, it's just a difficult, it's a, for me, it's a difficult conversation because I feel like I'm in the middle of it personally in terms of my own personal growth. And I'm taking a lot of gratitude for the people who join in the comments and also for Diego and Nico for uh, willing to be in this space. Well, thank you all. Hopefully you'll have a wonderful night. And Diego, any resources that we have or, or things for people to, to go check out if they want to get more things? Yes, it's a mental health action day today. So uh, we have our website. Uh, we have some mental health resources at alientoaz.org slash uplift. It's in the, uh, in the bio. And also we have an arts and healing workshop for DACA mixed status and undocumented families this Saturday. Um, you can check our Instagram at the link. There should be a flyer on there. And there's a lot of events on our page. So definitely check it out. Yeah, bueno. Ahí estamos. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, take care and be safe. Bye. Bye. Okay, so how do we do this? Yes.